Hello everyone, I hope you're having an excellent Saturday because we are back at the Capablanca saga, we are back at the 1918 tournament of New York, uh, this is the second to last game that we are going to show, uh, it's uh, David Janowski versus Jose Ruel Capablanca, uh, so facing him for the second time in this tournament, Capablanca still without a loss and it's, uh, well, he's just been having one of the best tournaments in his career. And uh, some of you have mentioned that uh, perhaps the Capablanca saga has been going on a bit too long uh, and that maybe we should switch to something else. But for those of you who share this opinion, uh, there is a reason that we are covering uh, almost all of the important games uh, here in this uh, saga. And uh, it's, uh, well, I, I will address this issue at the end of the video, but uh, I do hope you watch it and uh, try, try to, well, understand why it's very important that we cover it thoroughly. Uh, that being said, uh, let's check out this photo one more time for those of you who may be just joining us. A nice photo from the 1918 Tournament of New York. It's from the round 11. Capablanca, of course, faces Oscar Heiss on board one and the uh, rest of the gentlemen in the back. So, uh, that being said, let's check out this very nice game. Uh, so, Capablanca with the black pieces. Janowski opens with d4. Uh, we have d5, knight to f3, knight to f6, and of course by now you all know what's uh, what's going to be played. We have e6, the queen's, ga queen's gambit declined is on the board. Uh, bishop to g5, and now d captures on c4, uh, grabbing that c4 pawn, uh, and e3, of course, preparing to recapture with the bishop. Uh, we have c5 by black, and now... Uh, this position is played even today. Today, most likely, you would see a bishop capture on c4 move, but here, Kapablanka, uh, sorry, uh, Janowski played knight to c3, and it's a move that uh, hasn't been played since. So ever since uh, this game in 1918, this exact same position has never been reached uh, later. Uh, but okay, with a6 by Kapablanka, preparing to solidify with b5 is possible. Janowski, of course, prevents that with a4. Uh, C captures on d4, E captures on d4, and now bishop to b4, just pinning that knight. Capablanca uh, prepares to develop the queen and also bring this knight to e4. Uh, bishop captures on c4, finally white recaptures the pawn, and now queen to c7, attacking the bishop on c4. Uh, you could move the bishop, uh, go back to e2, but Janowski goes about it differently. Queen to e2, developing a queen while defending on c4, and now, as planned, now that the queen has moved from the d8 square, knight to e4, already threatening to uh, win some material here, and... Uh, uh, it is a it is a very interesting uh, idea. If if uh, Highest went for this queen captures on e4 move, Capablanca would most likely go bishop captures on c3, b captures and recapture on c4 now, winning back material. But it's not really a problem for White here. Uh, Janowski could go knight to d2, just kick the queen back, just uh, you know nicely castle and everything. And if Capablanca was greedy enough to capture the c3 pawn, it's it wouldn't really be a problem. White can just castle and everything is fine. You you already have threats of rook c1. Uh, the bishop on c8 is undefended, uh, I mean, it's just a much better position for white, the black king still has the castle, and without uh, black actually having the dark square bishop, uh, Janowski's dark square bishop will, uh, you know, run all across the board unopposed. So, uh, an interesting idea by, by Capablanca, uh, but it, uh, well, White definitely has a lot of compensation for, for this uh, seemingly gambited pawn. Uh, but Heiss isn't interested. He plays castles, uh, and here knight captures on g5. Capablanca decides, uh, he, I'm not interested in a pawn, my king is still in the center, I want to remove black strong dark square bishop. Uh, we have knight captures on g5, and now comes queen to e7, with an attack on the knight on g5, uh, and queen to h5, already uh, pressuring black somewhat on the king side, of course you cannot castle due to queen h7 checkmate, so first you have to address this. You can address it uh, either via uh, h6, uh, although there's uh, there are a lot of possibilities here. If you play something like h6, then the f pawn is pinned, the knight captures on e6 could become a problem. Uh, so Capablanca first pushes the queen back, we have g6, Queen to h6 and now queen to f8, offering a trade, but of course Haas isn't interested, he's controlling more space, uh, he's deciding the tone of the battle here, so queen to h4. Uh, and bishop back to e7, now pinning this knight, and here just queen to g3. And already you can see that uh, we're only on move 16, but Capablanca has a queen on f8 with uh, the king still being in the center. Now it's, uh, well... If the if castles uh, already happened, if the king was in g8 and the h8 rook was in the game, then it wouldn't be so strange to see the queen on f8. But with the king still still being in the center of the board, uh, the queen being on f8 uh, is is a bit bit of a problem. You know how are you going to develop here? So here, Capablanca has to make a choice, and this is what uh, I'm going for with the title of this video. Sometimes playing the best move simply doesn't cut it. 
Uh, here, even though there weren't any engines in those days, uh, the best engine was probably Capablanca himself. Here, the strongest reply by the engine is just Queen G7 and hoping to castle. But here, White has the very strong D5 reply. And now, after castling, you simply play D captures on E6, F captures on E6, and now Knight captures on E6. So you would win the spawn here after Bishop captures. You would play Bishop captures with check. King moves and now rook 8 to d1 and black has huge problems developing. He's down material, it is only a pawn but a very important pawn and you don't have a good way of developing. You can't go knight d7, if you go knight c6 then you allow the rook to infiltrate via rook to d7, pinning the bishop, attacking the b7 pawn and it's just a very ugly position for black. So here, uh, even though it's the strongest line recommended by the engine and of course Capablanca the, the thought about going queen g7 and castling, it's, it's, uh, e even if it's the best line, it's simply not enough. So Capablanca tries to complicate. Uh, first, bishop captures on g7, remove one of the attackers. Uh, we have queen captures on g5 uh, and now comes knight to d7 with ideas of that if d5 comes and uh, d5 is uh, a very nice option for white, but most likely the idea was if d5 then e5. Uh, but then the problem is what if d6 is played? Uh, black really doesn't have all that many options. Uh, you can play f4, open up the center, go rook e1, uh, a lot of ways to attack this king that's still in the center, and even if you capture the pawn, then comes knight e4, and after the queen moves, uh, rook fe1, you can just yeah, threaten so much, uh, and even if black castles, it's still not enough. Rook ac1, uh, already threatening to win the queen, check, this would pick up the queen, and uh, there, there are, I mean, there are just so many ideas for white. Queen h6 followed by knight g5 followed by checkmate on h7. If this knight ever moves, then knight to f6 is an idea. If you just move the queen, if you don't want to lose the queen, then rook e to d1. Now, with again so many threats, you can even remove the defender of the f6, create some threats there. You can just push the h pawn. It's just a disgusting position for black. But uh, somehow, well, with this previous move where Capablanca had to decide how to develop, he captured on g5, uh, Janowski recaptured, and then he played knight to d7. And here, Janowski probably thought about d5, but he, he was like, I'm playing against Capablanca, he's still without a loss, you know, last time he lost was against uh, Oscar Hayes in that Rice Memorial of 1916. Uh, surely Capablanca thought about d5, I mean, if he allows it, it, it probably doesn't work, uh, and he tried to play an even better line. Uh, he, he decided to strike while the iron's hot, so to say, uh, and he played knight to d5. He says, I'm not wasting any time, I'm just going straight for Capablanca. Uh, now, of course, knight to c7, a huge threat. Uh, if you capture, then you're immediately lost. Rook f1 check, the king has nowhere to go. Uh, you would have to either go queen e7, which would be followed by queen captures checkmate, or you would have to give material rook captures or queen captures with e5 would check, king d8, now you can capture queen f6 check or that, queen d7, now bishop captures on d5, and I mean, you're just dead lost here, there's no recovering from this position. Uh, but here, after knight to d5, he missed one move from Capablanca. Capablanca just played a queen to d6, and here there is no good follow-up for white. Uh, white uh, had his opportunity to go d5, but here, I mean, your knight is just now uh, under attack. Uh, the queen freed the f8 square for the, for the black king, so how do you continue here? Uh, rook f1 was played, but now Capablanca just castles. He says, okay, uh, there are no threats here, uh, not, not any dangerous ones at least. Uh, so here uh, we have knight to f6 by Anovsky with check, knight captures, uh, we have queen captures, and now just queen to d8, again offering a trade of queens. We have queen to e5, and now bishop to d7, preparing to go bishop to c6 to fully develop, uh, and now Janowski went d5. But here d5 is uh, not nearly as strong as when d5 uh, should have been played. We have e captures on d5, bishop captures on d5, and now just bishop to c6. Capablanca says, okay, double my, uh, I mean, uh, ruin my pawn structure here. Uh, the material on the board is equal, I can play this. Uh, so, bishop captures, we have pawn captures, and now rook a to d1, attacking the queen and queen to b6. So, you have this position, and then you had that position where we've shown if d5 was played in the in the absolute correct uh, move, uh, then Capablanca would be in, in a, lot, a lot of trouble, uh, most likely lost but who knows, I mean, he's Capablanca, he might he might <laughs> pull it off somehow, uh, but still, much better than this, playing this position against Capablanca, where you're slightly better due to the 
uh, due to the connected pawns on, on the queen side, whereas black has three pawn islands. Uh, but okay, here uh, Janowski says h4. He wants to play h5, h6, and deliver checkmate on g7 if possible. Uh, we have rook 8 to b8 by Capablanca going after the b2 pawn, and now just h5. Uh, Janowski says, I'm not interested in a pawn, I'm still continuing my attack. Uh, and this is uh, something that often happens when you have a great advantage, your opponent equalizes and then you want to continue attacking even though you no longer have any any rights to attack. I mean, if you're, if you're not better, then uh, you can just start an attack out of nothing. But okay, it is a dangerous position, h6 definitely a threat, uh, but Capablanca uh, calculates precisely. Queen captures on b2. Uh, offering a trade of queens. Now, of course, there is this tension here, but Janowski just blocks rook to d4. Now, okay, there's uh, this uh, problem here that h6 is still a threat, followed by queen to g7 checkmate, but rook f8, attacking the queen, not allowing white a move with h6, and white now has to decide what to do. The problem is you can't move the queen because your rook is hanging here, but Janowski saw this, and he prepared uh, to trade queens, uh, a queen for two rooks. So, queen captures on e8 with check, rook captures, and rook captures with check. King to g7, and now, of course, your rook is under attack, you don't have time to do anything on the king's side, you have to move it, uh, rook to h4. And here, he has the correct idea. Uh, if Capablanca plays a slow move, like, uh, let's say, a5 or something, then h6 will secure white a draw, because after king to f6, you will go rook f4 check, king g5, and now you will capture on f7. And here, uh, if you allow this uh, rook captures on h7, then this becomes a very dangerous pass pawn. So after king captures on h6, you will just go rook to e3, not allow black to escape here, and now you will just check him rook h3 check, rook g3 check, rook h3 check, rook g3 check, and you will have a draw by repetition of moves. So after rook to h4, Capablanca says, no thank you, I'm still interested in playing this game. Queen c1 check first. Uh, we have king to h2, and now comes queen to h6, not allowing any captures here because the rook is hanging, so first f4. Uh, we have g captures on h5, there, uh, there's no problem here, uh, and now comes rook to e5, going after the h5 pawn, and here just queen to d6. Uh, now putting pressure as the queen is on the same diagonal as the king, and uh, here you can definitely go rook captures here, Capablanca would just move the king, rook captures here, and then you would have this position where white would have grabbed a few pawns, but then black would start uh, 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 pushing the passed pawn, the passed c pawn. So this was Capablanca's idea, but Janowski has a different idea. First g3, uh, and only now uh, is he ready to capture on h5. Capablanca played h6, we have rook h captures on h5 now, and now king to g6 by Capablanca. So now this rook uh, cannot leave the fifth rank because the king is also attacking this rook. Uh, we have g4, uh, but g4, although it nicely protects the rooks, uh, it allows Capablanca a move that uh, really gives him a lot of advantage, even though uh, Janowski has two rooks for a queen, Sometimes uh, even that's not enough when you allow Capablanca uh, a free move like this. Uh, so feel free to pause the video. It's a very nice Saturday. It's been uh, you know raining for so long. It's such a, a nice sunny day. So at least here. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find this brilliant move uh, Capablanca found in this position. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you uh, who were able to do it, congratulations. It's it's a move you should almost never play, uh, but when you're allowed to play it, then it usually wins the game. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, of course, the move is f6. So now here's the problem. Uh, what do you do here? Uh, obviously, you have to move the rook. The problem is when uh, white played g4, the g3 pawn no longer guards the f4 pawn. So now if you move the rook, you're going to lose this pawn, and that's going to be a huge problem. The only square where you can go with the rook is rook to f5. But now you have two rooks against the queen, but this rook is never coming out of there, and this rook is stuck here guarding the f4 pawn. So although you have two rooks, they're really not doing all that much. And this was what Capablanca played. Uh, so, first queen to d2 check, we have king to g3, and now comes queen to d3 check. First, uh, uh, delivering a few checks to see how, how white is feeling. Uh, queen, king to f2, now queen to d2 check, king to g3, and now queen to e1 check. Uh, king to g2, and now comes queen to d1. Uh, putting pressure on the a4 pawn, but also threatening queen captures on g4. If if queen captures on g4 happens, that's that's game. For example, if white isn't careful, if white plays something like a5, tries to save the a pawn, then this is winning. Queen captures here, after the king moves, you can just grab the rook 
uh, doesn't really matter because the king and pawn endgame uh, is uh, uh, super winning for black. Black is up material. There's no no uh, questions that this is winning. So after queen d1, we have king to g3, Janowski defense, and now first queen b3 check, pushing the king back, king f2, and only now capturing an a4. So now white still has two rooks, but Capablanca has two passed pawns here, the, uh, the passed c pawn and the passed a pawn. We have king to g3, queen back to b3 with check, king f2, and now comes queen to c2 with check. King g3, queen to e2 now, uh, going back at it, uh, and now you are free uh, to start pushing your pass pawns. Uh, we have rook to h2, uh, Janowski wants to get that rook into the game as quick as possible, queen to e3 check, and now king to h4. And now finally c5, Capablanca starts pushing the pass pawn. We have rook to c2, and now comes c4. Excellent tempo, uh, because you cannot capture the rook. If you capture it, uh, then of course the rook is lost. Uh, but you should be careful not to make a mistake like queen e2, uh, going for either the rook or checkmate on h2, because white defends both with uh, rook to c3. The rook cannot block check. Uh, what you want to do is just uh, queen f2 check, king goes here, queen f1 check. You will pick up the rook and win the game. Uh, so, after c4, we have rook to a2, and here we have c3. The pass pawn simply continues. Uh, we have rook to g2, and now comes queen to e4, attacking the rook here on g2, rook to g1, uh, and here queen to e2. Now the pass pawn is, uh, again, uh, preparing to, to march. We have rook to g3, and here Capablanca played c2, and it was in this position that uh, David Janowski resigned the game on move 55, as there is nothing to do here. One... Well, one obvious move, how, how you could stop the pawn is rook to c5, uh, but it simply doesn't work. Again, feel free to pause the video here and try to find how you punish punish white for, for such a silly move. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent uh, winner of rooks on a weekend. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, of course, queen to h2 check. Uh, the king has no moves, you have to block, and the once the rook blocks, now a queen f2 check picks up the rook on c5, so it's not a, not a problem. Uh, just rook g3, queen captures, next move you promote into a, into a second queen and win the game easily. So yeah, after c2, you can see such a such a shame for Janowski. He played a brilliant game, Kapobanka played a few slow moves in the opening, you know, Kapobanka and openings, you know, we, we can't uh, state this uh, enough, uh, but... He, he didn't take his chance. He should have played d5 immediately, and then he probably would have would have won the game easily. Uh, but then he gave <laughs> Capablanca a chance. Capablanca didn't play the strongest move. Uh, he played the other one. He decided to trade on g5, and then, you know, he, he managed to confuse Janowski. And this is how you sometimes have to play, uh, you know, to, to win games. It's just the way chess works. Uh, but yeah, uh, a wonderful victory for Capablanca in this uh, second to last game that we are showing. Last uh, last game Capablanca uh, will play is against uh, Borislav Kostic, Serbian Grandmaster, and we will be uh, showing that game as the last game of the 1918 New York tournament before we head into the five game match with Borislav Kostic in, in Cuba, Havana. So, that being said, I just want to address uh, some of you have said that. Uh, maybe the Capablanca saga has been going on for too long, but, uh, you know, uh, personally, I, I enjoy every game that I see Capablanca has played because, yes, uh, you know, uh, 10 years ago when I read uh, a book about Capablanca, I was like, wow, this this man is a god. I, I, I mean, he probably won every game blindfolded. Uh, but now when you see the games, when you see that Janowski actually had a chance to play D5 and maybe even break Capablanca's uh, legendary uh, <laughs> not losing streak, uh, you know, you... Uh, you you tend to appreciate his fighting spirit uh, a lot more th than just uh, thinking that he he's someone who who can't make a mistake. And even when we were covering the Bobby Fischer saga, if you were following the channel back then, um, uh, for example, during the candidates matches in 1971 when he played against uh, Ben Larson and then Mark Taimanov, you know everyone knows that he defeated them six to zero. But then when you see every game of the of the candidates. Uh, then you see that it was a very, a very close call, especially the first uh, three games in every match. They were, like, really, really intense. And then, okay, when Bobby caught win, then he just obliterated them all. But still, uh, without actually checking out all the games, you, you'd think, like, uh, you know, he, he just came there, you know, played a few moves, and everything was over. But it was a, it was a really huge fight. So here, I, I was very impressed <laughs> with Janowski's play here. Really just, uh, I mean, how do you not play D5 there? I mean... Okay, when, when you play against someone like Capablanca, someone who is immortal, basically, uh, sure, you're thinking, okay, <laughs> obviously Capablanca saw d5, so I'm not going to play that, but uh, 
still it's it's i don't know to me it's just really amazing and, and i i really feel that we should uh you know do do the entire capablanca saga properly and see just what happens so uh that's the game i do hope you enjoyed it and i do hope you enjoyed my well sort of uh explanation as to why we're not rushing with the saga uh, I would like to thank Dan O'Hanlon, Dame Potvaretz, uh, RB, who uh, requested to remain anonymous, uh, Robin Via, and Way Wayne uh, Christensen for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the Capablanca saga, we will be checking out uh, the Women's Candidates tournament started, so some nice games uh, I've heard uh, have been played there. Uh, and, of course, checking up on your suggestions and waiting for Norway Altibox Championship. So yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, I will see you soon. Hope you enjoyed it and have an excellent rest of your Saturday.